Hello and welcome to week four, the last week, part one. So we are in this video going to talk about functions. We are going to talk about what they are, uh, what they do, what they're good for, so how to use them, uh, different components of them, uh, of functions, um, how you define them, how you use them. Um, this is going uh, based off of uh, the previous week's um, coding segments and logic and variables and all of that. So this video is going to assume that you understand what I'm talking about. And if you haven't watched that video, it might be helpful to go back and watch uh, those videos or to just research what variables, data types um, and logic and algorithms, uh, what those are. So uh, let's dive into functions together. So what is a function in programming? A function is a, a set of operations that usually takes some type of input, performs the operation, and produces a result, an output. So when you uh, write a function, it has to do with um, performing a set of um, instructions on data that you uh, add to the function. Most of the time when you send data into a function, when you use that, you want to be able to perform the same sets of operations, the same instructions, but on different input. And again, vague, broad in general. So let's use an example. Uh, in your everyday life, maybe you've ever made a smoothie. So when you make a smoothie, you usually tend to do the same thing over and over and over again, no matter what smoothie you're making. Um, you have made a liquid, you might have a fruit, and you might have a sweetener. Then you blend those up together. That's my cat playing. Ignore that. So you blend those together and you produce a smoothie. So it doesn't really matter if you choose strawberries or bananas or peaches or whatever as your fruit. And it doesn't matter if you use milk or water or orange juice as your liquid. And it also doesn't matter if you use honey or sugar or maple syrup as your sweetener. The steps of making the smoothie is the same no matter what your ingredients might be. Um, so you have varying ingredients, but the operation is the same and produces different results depending on your inputs on your ingredients. And that is essentially what a function is and um, the, the whole reason why you would want to use functions. So functions are super helpful when you need to do the same thing over and over again, but with different things. So like the smoothie example. Uh, in math, you do have functions uh, if you've ever um, gotten to that stage of math. Um, they're even called functions. And they look like this, that you uh, start with uh, an F and then there's a parenthesis and usually an X and then you have a calculation that you're supposed to perform. So say it's five times x plus one. So in a mathematical function, uh, depending what you set as the x in the fx part of your mathematical equation, you're going to slot in that number into the set calculation. So what was it? Five times x plus one. So say that we say that uh, x is 3 this time. So that would mean 5 times 3 plus 1, 16. Um, and then you will use that function again, but you would slot in a different number. So this time, let's say 10. So then you would write f parentheses 10, and you would get the mathematical equation of 5 times 10 plus 1. So that would yield 51, a different result but it's the same basic steps, the same calculation with the difference that you can slot in different numbers. And that is exactly how functions in programming work, except that we don't only do calculations. 
So just like when we talked about variables and data types and logic and algorithms and that uh, basic coding segment, there are keywords when you create functions. And these can vary and um, very much between different programming languages, but they all work the same. Um, so it's more important for you to know that you need to, um, that, that functions exist, that they have keywords and that they're different in different languages than remembering every single one. So when you use functions, you really have um, two things you need to think about. First, you need to declare a function and then you can call a function. So when you declare a function, you tell the computer what the function is going to do and how it's going to do it. So if we, we're going to continue the smoothie metaphor, you are writing a recipe book and declaring a function is like writing the recipe and the instructions. So you would say, gather these ingredients, and then you do step by step the instructions of how to make smoothie. That's declaring a function. And that has a specific um, keyword, a specific syntax, a specific way of writing it in every language. Um, I'm not going to get into it super a lot because saying it out loud, if you don't have it in front of you, it's going to be confusing and a bit strange. So I'm going to try to um, shorthand it and just give a general idea of this. But just know that when you're declaring a function, you're telling the computer how to do something, but you're not but you're not actually running any code. You're just saying, this is how this function is going to run. That is declaring a function, like writing a recipe. So then calling a function is then instead actually making the rest, actually doing the recipe, actually making the smoothie. Uh, once you've declared a function, you can call it, meaning you're, you're telling the computer, hey, I'm asking you to do uh, the function that I defined earlier, that I declared er earlier. And that also has its own separate way of writing keywords and syntax. So when you declare a function, you need the keyword. And again, I am most familiar with JavaScript, so I am going to use JavaScript terms. And this varies. So whichever language you choose to uh, learn more about, or that you want to, uh, that you get interested in, they're going to be a little bit different, but it's the same basic principle. So in JavaScript, you have first a keyword function when you're declaring a function, then you choose a name for that function. After that, you have parentheses. And here is where you specify your input. So in our smoothie example, here is where you would um, save space for your ingredients. Now, since we want our functions to be uh, applicable to many different inputs, we might know, not know exactly what's going to be um, our inputs whenever we use or call the function. So instead of specifying strawberry, um, when we uh, write, declare the function and write out um, what the inputs are going to be in our uh, parentheses, we can use a general term to describe what's going to be one of the inputs. In this case, instead of writing strawberry, a good word to use would be fruit, because you can send, uh, you can, um, as an input, have any type of fruit, but then you know, um, then you've described one of the inputs that's going to be specified when you uh, use it. So if you would compare or contrast this with uh, writing it in a recipe book, here you could write um, one deciliter of fruit, and in parentheses, you choose whichever fruit you want. Um, and this makes the, the function reusable for many different inputs. So the important part to understand here is that uh, when you declare your function and you uh, have the keyword function, the name you give the function, and then the parentheses with the inputs. But these inputs that you write when you declare the function are placeholders. They are just reserved spaces, and you specify the inputs when you use the function, when you call it. 
So if we try to look at the making a smoothie uh, example and see what other um, things you might write as placeholders in between the parentheses when you're declaring the function, uh, we previously used liquid and sweetener. So when you have the function make smoothie parentheses fruit liquids uh, sweetener, you know that that's the inputs that this specific function needs. It needs to specify um, those three things. And when they're in the parentheses and you're putting it as a placeholder, uh, when you're declaring the function, they're called parameters. So every so when you declare it between the parentheses, that are those are the param parameters. So then, what does it look like when you use or call the function? So in our recipe book um, metaphor, this is when you're actually doing the recipe. You're following the instructions in the book. Uh, this is what's going to create the actual smoothie. So. How that looks is that you just write the name of the function, the parentheses, and you send in the actual values to replace the placeholder values. So for example, when we have the, the um, example of fruit liquid sweetener, I want to send in to make my smoothie banana milk and maple syrup. So Anything that uh, is going to be, be manipulated and that was used previously in the declaration as a placeholder, that has now been replaced with the actual values when you're calling, when you're using the function and performing the instructions. Think of it as if the book uh, just says, add the fruit, the liquid, uh, and the sweetener to a blender. This is where you choose what those ingredients are going to be, and then you blend. Now, uh, please remember that uh, a function doesn't need to have any parameters. That just means that you don't need to send something in. You don't need to, when you call that function, um, have any value that from outside that you manipulate and yield a result with. Um, in the case of, if you want to think about the math example we had earlier, where you would have f, x, and then a mathematical formula, um, if you have fx 8 plus 3, it, it still yields a result. It's just that the result is going to be the same every time because you don't switch out any, any input. 8 plus 3 is still going to be uh, 11, no matter what you set as uh, x, because it's not just not used. And in programming then, when you don't have any parameters, you just don't have any input that you send into the function, but that the function still uh, runs and the instructions on, uh, in the declaration still um, runs when you call that function. In this case, we're just using these uh, parameters um, so that you can understand how they work and what happens. So when you do switch them out, when you do have parameters, when you do have uh, fruit, liquid, sweetener, when you switch them out, they become arguments. Um, and in the beginning, it's a bit difficult to like grasp when is it an argument and when is it a parameter. So P placeholder parameter, and then the arguments are when you send in the real values that are going to be used. And then once you have your function declaration, you can call your function as many times as you want and with any varying ingredients that you want. You could do make smoothie like what, what I said with banana, uh, milk and maple syrup. Then you can again make smoothie and you could do mango, uh, orange juice, um, sugar. And you could do this a thousand times and it's the same instructions over and over again and you just send in different values. And that is what we would call that the fu function is uh, modular so um, you can reuse it and it's like this its own separate entity and you can just have uh, reusability for this one specific task over and over again so modularity means that um, this one function does one thing it makes a smoothie 
And reusability means that you, you've declared this, the instructions, so that's done. Now you can use them over and over and over and over again in your code. So earlier we said that to call a function, to use it, all you need to do is write the name of the function, the, one, the name you gave the function, uh, send in the specific values you want to be uh, manipulated, changed, whatever, um, and you've called the function. The thing is that when you do that, um, if you are going to um, have a result that you want from this, you need to save it in a variable. So say that you want to make a chocolate chocolate banana. That sounds good, right? A chocolate banana smoothie. Then you, uh, if you want to be able to save that smoothie in uh, uh, that result and use it later in your code, just like creating a variable, you need to create a variable here for your result. Um, so what would that look like? Basically, you use the keyword to create a new variable, let. You name your variable, chocolate smoothie. And then you call your function, the name of the function. You send in your ingredients. And then when the function has run and done, made the smoothie, that smoothie is going to be saved in the variable chocolate smoothie. And now it's available in the code, it's saved in the computer's memory. Because if you just run the function without saving, um, saving uh, the result in a variable, it's still going to run the function. But if you want to re yield a result that you want to use later in your code, you need to ask the computer to save it in its memory. And to be able to save something in its memory, you do need to add one thing inside of your function. Uh, you need to add what it's going to return to the caller. So what does that mean? That means that uh, you use a keyword return and whatever you write after that keyword is what's going to be the result of your function. That is what is going to be sent back and saved in that variable that we talked about. If you're, going to, if you're going to use a little bit of a simpler example, so you can understand, is um, if we do a mathematical equation. Uh, so if you would say, let result equals, so you're going to set the value of result now, and you're going to call your function add number, add numbers. And in your, um, as your parameters, you're going to have x and y. Those are the numbers that you're going to add together. So in the declaration at the very end, you need to specify that what is going to be the result of this is x plus y. So return x plus y. When you use the keyword return, that is the result that gets sent back when you call, when you use the function. Now, if you don't save this in a variable, it's still going to send back that result. But if you don't save it in a variable, the computer is not going to reserve that in its memory and it's just gonna disappear into thin air. It's done the calculation, it's, it's sent back the number, but you didn't ask the computer to save that number. So it does the same thing, but you didn't ask it to save it, so it, it poofs out a out of existence. One important thing to note about this return keyword is that not only does it send back something to whatever called the function, it's also going to stop uh, the function uh, from from go f continuing uh, continuing to run. So as soon as the code uh, gets to return the return statement, as as it's called. Uh, it, it, it jumps out of the function. The function, uh, um, the declaration is over. Um, you don't do anything else. Even if there are instructions, even if, if there's more code under the return, it's still going to just terminate and not, do, uh, not um, um, perform those instructions. 
So if the first thing you write in your function declaration is return, when you call that function, it's just going to stop. So um, one thing that's very um, important to understand about functions and how it differs from variables is the sequentialness of it all. So we've previously talked about how uh, in order to use a variable, you first need to create it and the computer needs to save it in its memory and only then can you reference it. And since code is sequential, you need to create and ask it to store it in the memory, the computer to store it in the memory, before you can use it in your code. Functions work a little bit different and especially in JavaScript. Now this again can vary from language to language, but most modern languages works as follows. So you write your code and you call your function. You do not need to declare your function before you call it in your code. So your code runs, 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 and it gets to the function call. And when it gets there, no matter where you wrote your declaration in your code, it's going to jump to your declaration. It's going to perform all of the instructions inside of your function. And once it's done uh, with that, it's going to jump back to where it was when it called when it was called, back into uh, back on the same line where the function was called, and then it's going to continue sequentially from there on. So if if you imagine that you have your declaration at the very bottom of your code, at the very end of your file, and you call your function here then from the top, it's going to run the code, run the code, run the code, run the code. And then when it gets to the function call, it's going to say, okay, this is what I need to do. It's going to jump down here, perform the uh, instructions, and then it's going to jump back and then again, sequentially go down the line like this. Um, and this is important to note so that you understand that you don't need to do work in the same way as with variables. So with variables, usually you just have one line. It's very simple to see. You create two, you, you declare two, vari create two variables, um, uh, X and Y, and it's one, uh, two lines of code and it's very simple. My cat's going crazy. And it's very simple to see and understand. Uh, functions can be long. And when you have a long file with a bunch of code, having your function declarations, your instructions on how to perform the function in the, in the middle of it can be very confusing. So a lot of people like to put their function declarations at the very end so that you have the, the, the recipes at the bottom and then the rest of the code here. Um, then you know where to go to look for your declarations, your, your instructions, your, your, your recipes. And you have it separated from the actual what, what um, calling of the code. It, it separates um, the logic, what's happening, with the instructions on how to to do it. Um, but since it's not very intuitive that variables work in that this way and functions jump uh, and then go back in that way. Uh, it's important to note that so that you're aware of that to begin with. So I also want to specify that you don't, not only do you not need to send in a value to a function and you don't need to yield a, a result or have a return for a function. So let's say that you um, have a file and you created a variable that's called age. Uh, and you specify that as 16. Um, the function can uh, take that variable, perform a calculation, so you don't send age into it, and you don't um, return it to a caller, you just change the value inside of the function. Um, so then if some uh, code further down um, uses the same variable age, uh, it's going to have the updated value that the function changed. So if we visualize with hands and sock puppets here, uh, you, you declare your variable up here, uh, let age equal 16. 
Down here, you have a function that just changes uh, age. It adds 10 years. And then you use the same variable age down here after the function. Then it's going to have the value that was uh, updated in the function. In that case, you, you do something to a variable in the code and it does have a result but you neither send in anything into the function, you don't use the parameters, you don't specify uh, any arguments, and you, don't, uh, you also don't need to um, use the return statement because you're not trying to send that value back to a variable, you're not trying to send that value back to whatever called uh, the function. You're just performing the instruction and changing um, updating the value of that variable that already existed in the code. So you can use functions in, in different ways, really. So that is a function. Um, what I hope you take with, uh, with you from this video is that um, functions are uh, blocks of code with instructions that uh, you can reuse over and over again without writing the same code. You can uh, send in different inputs. You have placeholders for inputs. You write it as instructions, and that's when you declare a function. You tell the computer what you want it to do. And then when you use it, when you um, run the instructions, you call a function and you replace the placeholders, the P placeholder parameters, with the actual arguments with the specific values you want to use. I want you to remember that um, uh, you don't need to declare your function before you call it. Um, the code runs sequentially. Once it gets to the function call, it's going to jump to uh, the declaration. It's going to perform uh, the instructions, and then it's going to jump back and continue on sequentially. And I want you to really um, though we haven't discussed this, think about how useful this is um, for repetitive tasks. So uh, in everyday life, if you were working at a restaurant and you could uh, magically code in reality, you could uh, specify how to make a dish and then you could uh, switch out ingredients and um, run that a thousand times and you uh, would have those instructions um, written once, used a thousand. Um, and this is useful in programming for, um, without getting into too many details, say that you need to um, enter one million people into a register, uh, into a database for some reason. Instead of doing that manually, or instead of writing out the instructions over and over and over again, you write the instructions once, and then you can use them however many times you want. Um, so that is the power of, of uh, functions, the reusability, um, and the power of having a set instruction, a set, uh, a set of instructions that is reusable, and you can use it for different inputs and get different outputs. And another thing that I want you to think about, and that this is not really super important in the beginning, but it's good to have with you because the more complicated code you're going to write, the more important this gets. Please, please remember to um, have your functions do only one thing. Um, so if you're going to um, have a function for addition, only have it do that one task. Um, when you write bunch uh, long files with code, if um, you bake in two tasks into one function, you are going to have a hard time finding where you put your instructions. Um, so uh, we've discussed modularity already, but I'm going to uh, really emphasize here that it's very, very useful to have functions that have clear names and that do only one thing, functions that are small, and reusable, reusable, and that you can um, look through and quickly understand what they do. Um, because when something goes wrong, which it inevitably will, you will have to look through your code. 
And if you have, um, say, 10 functions and each function does three things at once, then you are uh, going to have to look through all of those to see where the mistake is. Whereas if you separate those functions and give them clear names, it's going to be a lot easier for you to uh, find where you can find the error or where something goes wrong. And in the beginning, you kind of want to just bake in everything into one function because it just feels simpler. It feels like you're exaggerating or it's cumbersome to write too many functions. But it is much, 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 much better to have small functions and a lot of them that do one thing than one big function that does everything at once. So don't be afraid to write a lot of functions that uh, do small things um, that you can uh, use over and over again. Um, so that was functions. Um, that is about as deep as we're going to go into the actual coding aspect. Um, this, is, this is more than enough anyway in the beginning. Um, but understanding these things, uh, you've really come a long way. If you, if you can grasp these concepts, the variables, data types, functions, using them, code running sequentially, the logic, how to use a return, uh, and even an, uh, an if state, if then statement, um, and checking conditions or comparing values like, um, is this number bigger than that number? If you can grasp these and you're comfortable with these, you've actually come a lot further than you might realize. Um, this is the basis of coding. These ideas uh, exist in, uh, uh, without being too confident, I would say all languages. These are concepts that are just applicable to um, coding everywhere in any instance. This is the the the. The, the meat and potatoes of, of coding. The rest uh, around it, the peripherals, that can vary from language to language and it can vary from uh, the t uh, between the different tools and applications like gaming or web or whatever. But looking at code, this is what you're going to see over and over again. So if you've grasped this, congratulations, you've come a long way. So thank you so much for um, watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.